Sightings of and encounters with bizarre beings have been whispered about for centuries. Sometimes, however, some stories are more strange than others. As such, here are five of the strangest monsters ever reported. In North American folklore, small, bulbous-headed humanoids have been reported to attack innocent people. These bizarre creatures are known as melon heads. Uniformly described as malicious, these peculiar humanoids are known across multiple states. In Michigan, the legend of the melon heads is closely tied to Felt Mansion, an historic three-story gable-roofed brick mansion in Lake Town Township. Built in 1928 and used as a school, chapel and a police station at various points in its history, the grand house had fallen into disrepair by the end of the century. It was after its abandonment in the 1990s that strange, bulbous-headed creatures were said to have moved in. As well as being spotted in the dilapidated mansion, eyewitnesses have also reported encountering melon heads in wooded areas in bordering counties. In the past, local residents have approached media outlets with stories about the melon heads. Al Meshkin, who grew up in Lake Town, described how he heard the tales as a teenager and that the creatures were known as wobbleheads amongst his friends. And indeed, there are many local rumours to be heard. One claims that, far from being paranormal beings in their own right, melon heads were once child patients at the Junction Insane Asylum, supposedly located close to Felt Mansion. Said to be sufferers of hydrocephalus or waterhead syndrome, the children endured physical and emotional abuse at the asylum, before being released into surrounding woodland when the establishment closed. Unsocialized and alone, the children are whispered to have turned feral, living in abandoned buildings and caverns within the forest, attacking members of the public who become frightened by their startling appearances. Whilst the local historical society has stated that the Junction Insane Asylum never existed, a correctional facility once stood where the asylum was said to be. Many people believe that it was from there that the melon heads originated. Others in the area have dismissed the melon head legend as a confusion, relating to the term used to describe brainy students at the St. Augustine Seminary, which operated out of Felt Mansion from 1949 until the 1960s. Yet, with reports of strange-looking creatures in the area, there are many who are unconvinced by this explanation. In Ohio, where the bizarre beings are also alleged to have been sighted, an alternative origin story is proposed. Local law implicates a doctor who became fascinated with radiation and its potential to create a new species of human. Known as Dr. Crow, this sinister figure is whispered to have tricked orphan children into participating in his experiments. According to the tale, Crow's experiments led to the creation of monstrous mutated beings with large hairless heads and deformed bodies. Some of the orphans, it is claimed, were already sufferers of waterhead syndrome, meaning that their condition was worsened when the twisted doctor injected even more fluid into their brains. The legend concludes that Crow eventually met a grisly end, when his experiments turned on him, before burning down the orphanage and fleeing into the surrounding forests. Today, it is still rumoured that the offspring of these original creatures can be spotted along Wisner Road in Kirtland, close to where the orphanage is said to have once stood. According to a local newspaper, ever since the orphanage burned down, Residents of Kirtland have reported strange sightings of short, naked creatures with large heads roaming the woods. It is well known that carnivorous plants exist. Most familiar is the Venus flytrap, a toothy-leaved plant native to the subtropical wetlands on the east coast of the United States, which catches insects and spiders. While strange for its flesh-eating inclination, there are rumoured to exist plant life even stranger and more bloodthirsty. Throughout history, there have been numerous reports of man-eating trees. However, it is the case of the monstrous Madagascar tree which is most fantastical. 
This case of bizarre botany began on the 28th of April 1874, when the New York newspaper The World published a strange story. It related a discovery made by a German scientist Karl Lecce and his companion Hendrik whilst exploring the island of Madagascar. Most of the article consisted of a letter written by Lecce in Zanzibar, which was sent to a colleague. In his letter, the German botanist described how, after encountering a party of tribespeople, he and Hendrik were invited to observe a sacred ceremony involving a tree. Lecce stated that the plant was the most singular of trees, describing it as being like a pineapple, around eight feet tall, thick at the base, with eight large leaves. Each leaf was studded with hook-like thorns, which protected an oozing pool of thick, sweet liquid. Out the top of the grotesque-looking tree were long, writhing tendrils, which were constantly and vigorously in motion, with a subtle, sinuous, silent throbbing against the air. The letter claimed that upon reaching the tree, the tribe's people singled out one of their women, and forced her, at javelin point, to climb the trunk of the tree up to one of the leaves. Visibly distressed, the woman reached one of the liquid pools, at which point she was commanded to drink by those on the ground. On the ground below, the two men watched on in horror as the tribe's people chanted and cheered. According to Lecce, it was after the woman drank the viscous liquid that the atrocious cannibal tree that had been so inert and dead came to sudden savage life. The slender, delicate palpi, with the fury of starved serpents, quivered a moment over her head, then, as if instinct with demonic intelligence, fastened upon her in sudden coils round and round her neck and arms. Then, while her awful screams and yet more awful laughter rose wildly, the tendrils, one after another, like great green serpents, with brutal energy and infernal rapidity, rose, retracted themselves, and wrapped her about in fold after fold, ever tightening with cruel swiftness and savage tenacity of anacondas fastening upon their prey. The article claimed that with astonishing speed, the woman was consumed and entombed by the writhing tree. At the base of the tree, the tribe's people celebrated by drinking the mixture of honey-like fluid and blood which oozed down the leaves and trunk. Those who consumed the hideous concoction were said to have turned mad and frantic, sending the entire gathering into delirium. Horrified, Hendrik pulled his companion away, and the two men fled. Ten days later, Lecce supposedly returned to the monstrous plant, to find that the leaves had opened, and that nothing but a white skull remained, all other traces of the victim erased. This story left many astonished. Over the next few months, other newspapers around the world wrote about Lecce's discovery. Before too long, the man-eating tree of Madagascar was notorious, with many wishing to prove, and indeed disprove, the existence of the alleged hideous plant. In the years since, no one has been able to corroborate Lecce's story. In 1955, a science author condemned the entire case as a fabrication, which in turn has convinced others searching for an explanation. Whilst the absolute truth of this ghastly tale may never be known, the existence of carnivorous plants is a certainty. Venus flytraps consume insects. Pitcher plants have been known to consume birds and rodents. So, as weird as it may first seem, is a man-eating tree truly absurd? One night in 1955 in Loveland, Ohio, a man reported seeing three strange figures on the side of Hopewell Road. When he approached, the man was shocked by what he saw. He immediately ran to fetch the police, but by the time they returned, the figures were gone, leaving behind nothing save for the strong and peculiar scent of almonds and alfalfa. The strange figures, according to the man, were frogmen. The 1955 case, for all its strangeness, was soon forgotten in Loveland. That was until St. Patrick's Day 1972, when a police officer, Ray Shockey, reported seeing what he initially thought to be a dead dog on the bridge near Riverside Drive. Upon further inspection, and to his horror, 
Shocky witnessed what he described as a frogman rise up and stand on two legs. Aghast, the police officer shot at it, causing the creature to flee over the guard railing and disappear. Shockey related the story to his friend and fellow officer Mark Matthews, who later examined the site of the bizarre happening. Whilst driving along the Little Miami River, close to where the frogman was allegedly encountered, Matthews saw something scurry across the road. As the creature darted under the railings, Matthews fired his gun. This time, the bullet hit its mark. Upon retrieving the body, the officer realized that the creature was merely a large iguana without a tail, and not a frogman. Matthews took the body with him and showed it to Shockey, in order to ask if that was what he had seen. Shockey agreed that it was, and with that, the case of the Loveland frog seemed closed. However, it was not to be. In the years since, researchers have speculated that Ray Shockey, a police officer, did not want to associate himself any further with seemingly ridiculous tales of frogmen, and took the opportunity to exculpate himself when Matthews presented the iguana. After all, there is a key difference between the two sightings. Shockey claimed to have witnessed a bipedal creature which fled over the guardrail whereas Matthew saw a four-legged iguana scurry under the rail. Either way, frogmen are nothing new to the area around Loveland. A folklore professor at the University of Cincinnati, Edgar Slotkin, has stated that such tales predate the 1955 sighting. And indeed, supposed sightings of the Loveland frogmen have permeated into modern times. In 2016, Sam Jacobs and his girlfriend were playing Pokemon Go by Lake Isabella in Loveland, when they saw what they initially believed to have been a large frog. Stating that he had never before seen anything like it, Jacobs reported that the thing stood up and walked on its hind legs. I realize this sounds crazy, but I swear on my grandmother's grave, this is the truth. On the night of the 27th of April, 1973, Henry McDaniel, a veteran and antiques dealer, is said to have witnessed a horrifying and bizarre creature on his property in Enfield, Illinois. He was initially made aware of the creature when he heard a scratching noise at his door. McDaniel grabbed his gun and flashlight and went to investigate the disturbance, suspecting it to be a bear. However, the creature, according to McDaniel's later testimony, was something entirely different. The creature, according to McDaniel, had three legs on it, a short body, two little short arms, and two pink eyes as big as flashlights. It stood four and a half feet tall, and was greyish coloured. Startled, McDaniel took aim and shot at the unknown creature. It allegedly made a screeching noise, much like a wildcat's, before leaping away with great dexterity, covering an estimated 50 feet in three jumps. Unsure as to what he had seen, McDaniel alerted the police, who took his statement. The officers who interviewed him found him to be rational and sober, and did report seeing animal prints in the ground nearby, but other than that did not take his story too seriously. Henry McDaniel, on the other hand, took his encounter very seriously. He was convinced that he had encountered something monstrous. When questioned about his encounter later, McDaniel stated that it was not like any creature he had ever seen before. When speculation suggested that it might have been the escaped pet kangaroo of a man from Ohio, McDaniel stated that that was not possible, as he himself had had a pet kangaroo once, and that the footprints left behind by the mysterious creature did not have the claw marks of a kangaroo. Determined to raise awareness and find answers, McDaniel relayed the incident to a local radio station, where he elaborated on what he had seen. He described the monster as being almost human in appearance. After this, the story snowballed. McDaniel's report caused a sensation in the local area and beyond. 
supposedly a University of Illinois anthropology student, recorded a screeching noise in the area around Enfield, thought to be the monster which upon analysis had sounded similar to an ape. An Indiana radio station sent an investigator to explore the case. When he returned, he stated that he and three others with him caught sight of a mysterious creature which he described as being five to five and a half feet tall and was grey-black in colour. Cryptozoologists Lauren Coleman and Richard Crow also went to investigate the peculiar incident. Whilst exploring near McDaniel's property, they also alleged to have heard the same screeching noise associated with the monster. Citing their previous research, they linked the Enfield incident to a rash of strange sightings of an ape-like creature in other parts of Illinois that year. Believing there to be more than one being, they dubbed the creatures Swamp Slobs. Before too long, the story of the Enfield monster was well known. Local residents continued to come forward claiming to have seen the creature, with McDaniel attesting to have witnessed it on at least two other occasions. A few years later, in 1978, researchers from Western Illinois University dismissed the case, stating that it was nothing but mass hysteria exacerbated by local news outlets and gossip. Henry McDaniel, however, stuck to his story, despite being threatened by the sheriff with arrest for causing public hysteria. In his words, they think I'm crazy, I can't help what I saw. In April 2001, in the Indian capital region of Delhi, a rash of attacks by a supposed monkey man creature were reported. What would quickly escalate into a widespread phenomenon began with an isolated incident on the 5th of April. Anil Gopal reported to police being attacked by a monkey whilst asleep on his terrace in the early hours of the morning. For two weeks, there were no further reports. Then, on the 18th of April, a second report was made. Once again, a resident complained of being attacked in the early morning whilst sleeping on their terrace. From that point onwards, reports of people being viciously attacked in the same manner poured in. On the 19th of April, police were called to investigate the attack of yet another sleeping man, who spent three weeks incapacitated at home because of his injuries. Even the police themselves experienced the attacks, when a wireless operator was attacked at the police station. Whatever the creature was, it was vicious and could move quickly. One witness reported seeing the beast jump 20 feet across the terraces with ease. The increasing number of reports and rising public panic prompted the police to start a separate register of monkey attacks in order to be better able to track the incidents. Hundreds of people came forward claiming to have seen the creature, and a variety of different descriptions began to emerge. According to one witness, the creature was gorilla-like, with a very big back. Another described the attacker as having gleaming bulbs on an otherwise dark black body. In a different variant, the monkey man was described as being about four feet tall, covered in black hair, with glowing red eyes, a metal helmet, metal claws, and three buttons on its chest. According to some others, the monkey man even had the ability to turn into a cat after attacking. Based on such reports, Delhi police released a sketch of the alleged attacker. Whilst monkey man reports were numerous in April, it was in the month of May that attacks by the creature began to escalate even more. For many nights, hospitals were overwhelmed by dozens of patients claiming to be suffering from injuries inflicted by the monkey man. Terrified, local residents in the areas where the attacks were most prevalent organized nighttime vigils in an attempt to catch the elusive assailant. The police even put out a 50,000 rupee reward for any information on the monster. For all of this, on Monday the 14th of May, the monkey man not only struck again, but with seeming vengeance. Over 50 places reported sightings of the monkey man at once, with 16 people injured. It was reported that East and Northeast Delhi, where the attacks were concentrated, were placed under siege by a large police operation with the intention of capturing the assailant. 
all to no avail. If it had not been considered so already, the situation was by now out of control. Not only that, it was endangering lives, not just because of the supposed monkey man inflicted injuries, but by panic, with at least two people dying whilst attempting to flee during a perceived attack. With many determined to put a name to the attacker, rational speculation began to circulate that eyewitnesses were merely describing a normal monkey, and that there was nothing peculiar about the case. Yet, the director of the National Zoological Gardens told reporters that it cannot be a monkey as suspected, because they do not have the height attributed to the attacker by eyewitnesses. The repeated, unprovoked violence of the attacks also led many to conclude that an animal could not be responsible. A victim with bite marks from the creature was examined by a dentist at the request of police, who determined that the bites were not human. The only explanations left were trickery of some sort, or a genuine, mysterious creature attacking people. However, finding the truth of the matter proved to be impossible, with a concrete explanation never being attained. In time, the mysterious attacks decreased and eventually faded away from Delhi altogether. Strangely, reports of the Monkey Man reappeared a year later in other parts of India, yet, once again, an explanation proved elusive. Now, the incident has faded away altogether, relegated by skeptics to the realm of mass hysteria and legend. Thank you for watching, and an extra thank you to those of you who support us on Patreon. If you enjoyed this and would like more of the paranormal, don't forget to subscribe. And if you cannot wait until my next video, why not check out the one suggested on screen now. Until next time.